Good morning. I uh, trust you had a great weekend and that you celebrated your mother. And uh, I pray there was a, I know the coronavirus has limited families, but I pray yours was able to get together. If not, I pray you got on that telephone and you called her and uh, you shared your love and affection with her. Also, let me say thank you to those of you who've been so kind to respond to our live streaming. Uh, it is amazing, just truly amazing, the places that we're reaching and the response that we are getting. And I want to thank you. Some of you do what I guess they call shares, and uh, you invite others to join and watch. Please know I appreciate it so very, very much, and thank you. And uh, some of you have let us know your prayer requests, and I assure you that we are praying over those prayer requests. That means a lot to us. Your trust and your confidence to share with us, and we do pray for you. And uh, last but not least, let me thank you for your financial response. You have been so faithful. The Lord will bless you, I promise you. God is aware of your sacrifice. He is aware of your faith, and I thank you. This morning, if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of St. Luke, chapter 22. And um, I want to read to you verse 21, 22, 23, and verse 24. <clears throat> but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. In verse 24, now let's get the setting straight. He's at the Lord's Supper. He's at his last gathering with him. He's going to teach them about the power of his blood. He's going to teach them about a new covenant. He's going to wash their feet. It's a very powerful, 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 intimate setting. And one of them is going to betray him. And there arises a question at the Lord's Supper about which of them was to be the greatest. You know, at least three occasions, this question arose. One time, Jesus even took a child and set him in the midst of them and said, except you become like this little child. You know, one time Jesus turned and said to them, what was it you disputed, by the way? He had heard them, and they were talking about who was the greatest. And maybe you'd like to enter that discussion or debate. I'm sure Simon Peter would top many lists, or maybe John the Beloved, or maybe James who will become the first martyr. In fact, Jesus said to James and John, are you able to drink the cup that I'm able to drink from? Because the question had been asked by their mother, can my son sit on the right hand and the left hand? Jesus said, that's not mine to give. You know, comparisons will bring you to misunderstandings, and often to grievous disappointment. We cannot compare ourselves with each other. In fact, if any of us have anything worthy of anything, it is because Jesus gave it to us. Therefore, let none of us boast in ourselves about whatever gift or ability, opportunity, that has been given to us. May I tell you that you drank from a well that someone else dug? 
There is not a one of us today that have not benefited wondrously by someone else's time, investment, input, talent, that none of us would enjoy whatever it is that we enjoy without others having gone before us, often in great sacrifice, sometimes even through great trials. They have prepared for us what we enjoy. The issue was, was who was the greatest? That was their issue. Jesus said, don't be like the Gentiles who exercise authority over one another. But he said, by love, by love, serve one another. You know, I, I, I grow more amazed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the longer I live, the more frequently I read the Bible. When I read the Pauline epistles, when I read the book of Acts, when I, when I read the powerful words of the, the apostle Paul, when I read how, wow, how straightforward he is sometimes, how, I mean, right down the I's and the T's and the way we ought to live. And then the man who held the coat of Stephen writes 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Can you write a line or two to that great chapter? I read it often because when I read it, it humbles me. It humbles me. It makes me look inside and say, God, give me a heart for purity. Give me a heart for sanctification and cleanliness and righteousness and, and godliness. I believe it is ungodly to call strife. There was a strife among me. That means there was some ungodliness there. There was. Let's pray. Father, when we compete, when we compare, forgive us. Correct us, Holy Spirit. Help us to be willing to share all that we have. Let us to love as you have loved us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. You can join us tomorrow morning at, a, at, a, at 11 o'clock, I believe it is. We'll look forward to you. God bless you.